consultation by doing something in a manner that makes our work easy. So if, if, if the appointments are made, nominations are made, it is expected that the, the appropriate consultations, the, the um, proper investigation, proper scrutiny of those who are nominated would, would have been done by the executive. So, so we, are, we are at the point of We saw the same nominee walking, meaning that the executive branch was not actually cooperating with the um, House of Edit. Uh, we, we, during this period, during this uh, session, yeah. the third session, yeah. we, uh, I think we rejected about four nominees, but three or four nominees that had some difficulties with us. One was not rejected. But came under such a scrutiny that the executive withdrew him. And that particular person is, is uh, uh, Dupi. I'm sure that's the person you're yeah. reference to. Yeah. Um, and that position has not changed. The position is that he did not fit the, did not meet the, the, the demands of that office. The main question that came to play was that he deceived the executive, deceived the, the Bar Association, deceived the University of Liberia, deceived the the exec the 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 the, 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 uh, the, the legislature, and especially the Senate, when we got when he when he got confirmed. How did he do and what was the key issues? He gave issue information about his citizenship. He gave birth dates. He got gave about three different birth dates. And when you come before us, one of the things we look forward to is you must you take an oath in the process, you must tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And when it is determined that you do not tell the truth, then you do not deserve our confidence expect that the president would listen to us. In this case, the president withdrew him, but he went to a position, he went back to the position that he occupied when he, when he had deceived the executive. So, Senator, I'd like for you to summarize. You, as a legislator, you have a constitutional responsibility to make law, to provide oversight, you know, and all the things. So, if you were to come up with uh, a fair analysis of your own performance, and that's as a Senator, but your assessment of what the Senate did during this period, what could be your own assessment? I think that um, we could have done we could have done better. Um, do I say? us a passing mark, but I think we can do better, and we should be able to do better all the time. So, would I say about 70 percent, but a passing mark, but we got, we, we got a great deal. Okay. Sorry. So, Senator, let me take you to the other issue. Yes, sir. Go transition. Let me follow up on your question. The, the question you asked me is a follow up that one of your colleagues, you know, was honored yesterday by the library Senate because he will not be coming back after the session. And I mean, this this term is a term you are protesting. But one thing he stressed on yesterday was, you know, people should be appointed to to committees based on their expertise and the educational qualification they, they have. That's something he said, he said as an impediment to your workings, I know. And so, in the line of his question, the overall view of your, your third session, I also like to know from you, I mean, is, that, is this something that you experience? Uh, maybe your colleagues, some of them that work with you in committees room, uh, on, on, on other issues of, of concern, is this something that you have to work on as a body? 
our rules provide that those appointed to committee must have the, the, the requisite experience, training in that particular area that they are appointed to. I think you're making reference to uh, Senator Gay's remarks. Yeah. I have to say that I agree with Senator G Gay. Uh, part of the thing that we're trying to do in, in one of the projects that I'm associated with, the committees I'm associated with, is a committee uh, called Joint Modernization Committee, the Joint Legislative Modernization Committee. The intention is to use that to um, make the Senate a better place. And part of the thing of making it better is um, getting the appropriate people to be appointed to appropriate committees so that they can be effective. Because you cannot be do oversight when you do not have knowledge of the things that you're trying to oversight. So it is not that we will be able to have the entire like The, in all of the sectors in the government, no, it will not be. But you must have some knowledge, some experience, something that qualifies you to be able to play the role that is expected of you. That in making the law, for example, you have to have some knowledge about what you're making the law about, and or to get the right people to advise you. You know, you need to know something. That to do the advisement. If you do not know, you don't even get, you won't even have the capacity to get a good advisement. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll also talk about uh, President Henry Mamini appearing before you for confirmation. This session, how did it go? Is this something that you want to advise the President on? Uh, some people that um, have been appointed over the years, actually some of them have been replaced or do not have the requisite uh, criteria or qualification, is this something that you observe this session? You talk about that in your first session. We, we, we observe that. Uh, we have to do it with uh, more rigidity. And uh, because you see, when we, when we confirm somebody and who does not have all that it takes, the person will perform badly and it, it, it hampers development. So the president has said that we will do another pointed out. So we, we are on a duty and we really are on a duty to, to do it better. Senator, let me take you to uh, electoral violence. Liberia has had a uh, couple points of history when it comes to election in this country. Uh, going back to the 19th Destruction <coughs> properties coming to post war elections uh, 2005, 2011, 2017. They all accounted for their own uh, troubles and tribes. Now we're talking about May 2023 election. Tension is already on fire here in America. People are going to push moving back and forward. Uh, it does that confirm you as a seasoned politician in this country who have had the depth of understanding about electoral matters in this country? Well, the issue of election violence is of, of deep concern to me. And I, I think to you as well and to the general public. Um, is it 1985? No. 55. That, uh, that actually led to us having a de facto one-party state happened in 1965, you know, against the independent Tory party and this, that, and the other, and they uh, caused death and people fleeing the country, you know. <coughs> that violence led to a, one, a de facto one-party state. People in fear, and President Tugman then began to rule as if uh, there was no, in fact, there was no real opposition. Um, and that went on until, until Mr. Torbert took over, and Tubman died, and Torbert took over. Now, 85, you, you talk about 
It is the outcome of 85 and the dissatisfaction that led to people going into the bush to fight and think that they will be able to wrest power through violence. People who suffer violence as a result of that election began, a, began to find ways by which they too could have access to power. Um, those who were involved in it be able to take on the legitimate grievances, the legitimate grievances of the people to start a process, to start what happened. I mean, they, they believe in trying to really change society. You know, the evidence is there. You know, it, it wasn't, it, it could have been in the minds of some of those who participated, but the overall Violence, chaos, death, and destruction. We do not want to forget that. We remind people all the time in our, in our deliberations, we remind people that the reason why we're concerned about um, a fight against electoral violence and ensuring, because you know you don't just tell the people don't fight. You want to say, this is what you have, the option of doing it better. That has free, fair, democratic elections. That people see the transparency of that election, that they have no choice but to accept the result. There will be some people who might still complain, but they must be able to ensure that what you give to them is free, fair, transparent. Also, 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 I am. I, I, I have a very, you know, uh, I'm optimistic that the reason why everybody is talking about this and talking about free and fair, starting with the media, going to the religious bodies, the legislature, the reason why all the various for free, fair elections, and looking at the results, and looking at the processes that have been put into place, paying attention to that, is to make sure that we see through the processes that there will be free, fair elections. People going to court, it's not a bad idea. It's, it is better that those who have concern now go to court and to force the, the electoral bodies to respect outcomes of the court, and we ask the courts themselves not to, not to fall prey to political pressures, but to do and take actions consistent with the law. So, so um, there are arguments that uh, some people have already lost confidence in the, our court system, and henceforth any complaints going there, uh, absolutely the results are not going to be uh, judicious enough as per what the details of the Constitution is. Do you support that argument? Well, that people for, you know, we must never give the, we must, we must never, the courts and everyone involved in this process, must not give the, uh, the people a reason to lose confidence. There will be people who are concerned, and they will continue to have concerns about how the court of the of the court system but I have to say that we must we must help the court to work we must keep encouraging the court to respect their own law they, they are in a very very important position that to keep peace and show peace give confidence that the option is for the courts to do justice, to ensure that it follows the, the law properly. Carry on its rules.
things independent of pressures from wherever source. That 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 is what I would I would say about the court. This this what lack of listen, this lack of um, confidence that we are all seeing now in the uh, judiciary came partly as a result. Uh, as a result of a blunder on the part of uh, the Senate, for example, um, following the confession that led the CPP to the courts after the election, a decision came down directly from the judiciary that the voter rule must be, uh, they should work on the voter rule to try to make it a bit better. That instruction was given to the National Election Commission. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, we saw the NEC coming here for go and continue preparing for elections. But none of you could come up and say, no, we expect you to go back first and deal with that voter roll system or issue before you come for money. Why were you all silent on this until it happened to come into our money? No, we were not silent. In fact, there were members of the legislature who argued that we must give money to the election commission. To give it, not this commission, but the commission that was we, they, we argued that there needs to be support to the election commission. We must give those who argue that the elections should be, uh, uh, we should not give money because the, those who are members of the commission were leaving the scene. I think they were dead wrong. The commission needed to prepare. Even when a new group of, of, of uh, appointees came to the commission, they needed to see the work in progress. It, that was not done. But, but there was an there was an instruction given by the court prior to that. But the go instruction back and deal with the voter roll before you come for money. No, 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 no. That's, that's not, what people that expect is, from the from the election. No, commission. that is not true. That is not what the election. Uh, the, the, that was not the, the, the mandate of the court. The court says. But it did not say that do it, it will be without cost. So it had the, the, the process needed to be paid for. I'm not making excuses for the election commission, but I, I'm saying that we need to, you know, we need to Provide support. The funding to have yes, there's funding. Yeah. When we, as the election, I mean, when the matter came before the election, uh, to the legislature, we passed a resolution giving the mandate to the to the election commission to do the cleaning of the, 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 the election rule. What was not done was to make money available. Again, I am not making excuses for the election commission. I keep hearing from the election commission they come here and say we do not have money. The money that was agreed upon, even from our resolution, from the uh, Minister of Finance. I don't think the money was paid. Do we know why excuses have come? Some of them began to reflect, uh, you know, began to say there was COVID-19, which affected the revenue flow and all that. So we have to take those into consideration. What did we do as a legislature? as an executive to provide resources for the election commission to do its work. But the fact that the whole issue has come back because the CPP is saying they want to see the same voter road uh, clean up. This is one of their demands as we speak. Do you think they are really uh, speaking in line with, uh, with the truth or whether it is the right way forward? They have right to make those demands. They are not Unreasonable demand. These are things provided for by the court, provided for by the legislature, by the uh, especially the Liberian Senate on this matter. So when the party is raising it, it's all about trying to do the thing so that all of us can have confidence in the system. And I think what the CPP is saying, and I'm not. Uh, is that let's do it consistent with the law, consistent with the agreement. 
When we pass a resolution, it becomes law. So let us ensure that that law is in place. So, Senator, the opposition, the, the, the collaborating political parties, and the, 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 C, the COP have all threatened to embark on sustained uh, peaceful demonstration in this country. And you and I know the, the implications and the outcome of peaceful demonstrations in Nadeiri. Lao people are worried that something could spill out of what is quote unquote peaceful demonstration. And you have been around for some time. What do you say to those who are saying that those people, the opposition, should abandon whatever peaceful demonstration plan they have? What do you say to them? You know, um, demonstration, protestations are all part of the political process. It's part of what happens in society. You know, it's not every time that people protest, it means violence. may have taken place or demonstration would have taken place will acknowledge that these people are facing situation and find the room with the demonstrators of those who are not satisfied to take and find a solution. So this highly order that such situation it could scare investors away, it could stall the economy, things could get stagnated no. and uh, which could push even higher consequences. Are not going to demonstrate which no I think I think the, 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 the real way is to to sit together I think when when you hear someone complaining who is who is a key stakeholder in the process of election they they, they what you need to do is to get them to the table you don't need to sit to the table to discuss we are also we also have a comment on the referendum that has been confined with the military elections. Uh, many people have, have complained uh, uh, having the preposition on one ballot, and you know, we got yes or no. So if you vote for the presidential term, you know, the representative the presidential term, it may everyone all. So we say no, it means say no, they all. So mean, just to expand on yes. this question. A lot of voters who are already not sufficiently educated about uh, how they should vote, why they should vote on these propositions regarding the referendum, combining that with uh, other important proposals to vote on. They are not sufficient time for them to to come and really make a good decision. And so, the idea of combining it is not a good idea. Do you do you do you, do you agree with that argument? I think we've got too many things that we're trying to vote for. And it, it is it is definitely something that will become confusing for a population that is not the most uh, the one that is that got some serious challenges. I think, but that decision is already taken. What will happen? What could happen is that people will add up. Not vote or not vote properly or just vote again. You know, you know, so we need to look at the process. The process of doing education for this for this referendum started very late. We seem to just be meet, meeting an agreement. So you go But after that gives it was issued, the real thing that involved the media to go out there explaining to people about the issues have not been done properly. I don't think much work has been done in that regard. And I don't think the vote is to vote once and vote and that vote for all. I doubt that the constitution says each item that is proposed for change must be voted upon. So I don't know where you that one vote will cover all three propositions. I don't think that's the case. The, the government has argued that uh, to 
such a process there is a huge financial burden attached. Uh, don't you see this as a value argument? With, with, with uh, combining uh, the government has argued combining the, the referendum with the other election? No, no, no. That's what There are three, is it three or four proposals? Now, three. he suggested that we vote yes or no, then the problem is all clear. What is, what is, what is this uh, uh, publicized or the, 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 yeah, the civil education that have been sent to them uh, in the ears of the media is that all proposals. And so the well, government has to get actually an economic reason for doing that. No, so my question is, is no. don't you see the government argument no, no. as valid? Listen, on one ballot, on one ballot, on one ballot, my understanding of that one ballot is that the one sheet of paper you will have you have all, each of the proposals, but each of them, each one of them, you have the vote, the yes and no, yes and no, yes and no. Mm -hmm. So you actually vote three times. Mm -hmm. Then you oh, have the ballot. the ballot that is dealing with the election of the candidates who, uh, by the, yeah, the by-election. So, so, uh, yeah, sorry. Both the midterm, I think they happen around the same time. So, I think people will be challenged, really challenged, to be able to deal with this, this, uh, this, yeah, <laughs> having that referendum. Senator, I'd like to, you know, create a little bit of something very important. Uh, one of Liberia's only did it. The Daily Observer newspaper have alarmed that some of the stars in the city, you know, threatening messages, you are calling them, threatening them. And so the president has issued a statement, you know, drawing of his attention to that situation, that concern that has been raised by the Daily Observer newspaper. Now, my question to the Alex Randolph was to me, I want to see people in like we today who experienced that kind of, you know, intimidation, you know, depression. You've been through it, and you know what it is. You know the story that uh, many people, you know. So what, what, what do you make of, you know, kind of news coming again, you know, at this time, in 2020, of all to be hearing that newspapers, publishers, and other activists have been called by you know, obviously, on grounds of women, but what they do in society, advocating for women, equality, you know, and all of that. What do you make of that? I think that we must not take it lightly. I have, uh, and Daily Observer, the first daily newspaper in our country, have suffered those those uh, those type of things. Uh, daily Observer was burned down during the military regime and when the Daily Observer editors, publishers, managers were all picked up and put into jail, it was on account of them publishing uh, things about me when I was, uh, when the military picked me up and had me detained uh, and, and banned me like Observers wrote and condemned it. So I know the special thing involving the Daily Observer because I know that uh, in defense of my right or reporting on, on incident things involving me, they suffered. So, so, and to the extent that this thing is true, I condemn it. I condemn it very strongly. Uh, Thank you.